Shalom. I'd like to give all praise to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shah by Shem with Kar Kadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders and brethren of the Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect of Israel. Uh, to the Akim and Aqua confusing the face all around the earth. Okay, today I, I figure I'll get out before this rain gets back in. I'm supposed to get some more rain here. Uh, I've been waiting, chopping at the bit today to get out here and do this lesson. Um, my intent is to, to try to cover the epistle of, uh, of John, 1 John, uh, and, 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 and look at some of, some of the, the things that's in there in uh, the first epistle of John that uh, just covers a wide variety of things. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty much gonna have to move quickly guys are changing on me already uh, so I, I hope that this lesson is not gonna be uh, that disjointed uh, that you know you won't be able to learn anything from it so Lord will it will be edifying so I'm gonna try to move as quick as I can uh, like I say Lord willing it'll be edifying to someone if, uh, who watches the video okay so give me a second here so I can I'm gonna try and uh, cover some some topics uh, just alone in uh, the first four chapters of of uh, the first epistle of John um, that I think are important. Well, it's all important, but for some of the new believers out there waking up, still a little bit confused about what's right, what's wrong, uh, in, in terms of Old Testament, New Testament, um, uh, uh, the seed, Jacob, Esau, and things of that sort. And I found through studying last night that the first epistle of John, the first, I mean, the whole book is, the whole chapter, uh, the first five, well, the five chapters for the first epistle are just, great to go back and read through it but it kind of covers a lot of different topics that we find in uh, in in all four Gospels as well as in the in the Old Testament so without further ado let me go on and, and, and start in Salakia if I, if I jump around a lot uh, just try to write down the verses and go back and read it for yourself okay all right so this is uh, the first epistle general of John so this epistle goes out to all of the people who were living around about scattered, Jerusalem, um, Rome, the Mediterranean, as we call it today, um, and all these different places, man. It, it, it was to all of these people trying to get them to come back into their nationality, okay, into their heritage, okay? So I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read from uh, the first chapter and in the first chapter, I'm going to try to bring out some points, and then that's going to lead to go, us going into some other verses, okay? So, uh, Lord willing, like I said, it, it, it'll be edifying. So, without further ado, uh, this is chapter 1, first epistle of John, chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we, okay? So, he's talking specifically to a, 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 a particular group, okay? And that group is... The Israelites okay and those who knew they were Israelites and those who were still scattered and had no knowledge of, of, of the fact that that's what their heritage is okay so you'll hear a lot of we and us and that's what's being referred to in these chapters okay uh, starting over that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon with our own hands have handled of the word of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested unto us okay that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. 
And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that the Most High is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in light as, we, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Yahweh Hamashiach, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And then I'll reach into uh, chapter 3, which will explain what, what sin is. So if we move over one page, chapter 3, uh, first epistle of John and verse 4, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So who was transgressing the law? The Israelites were. Okay, we were the only ones who received the law. We were the only ones that could sin. We were the ones who were transgressing it. Okay, so now I'll go back over to uh, uh, verse 8 in chapter 1. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Okay? Now let's move on here to chapter 2, which I find very interesting. Okay? First verse. My little children. Where have we heard that before? My little children. Okay? These things write I unto you, that ye sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now the whole world in this particular verse, if you look it up in the Strongs, it is uh, cosmos, okay? So let's get back to these little children. In, in the beginning of the first verse in chapter 2, I think I got it. Mark. Lord willing, this rain will hold off on me and I can get through this. Salaki, I didn't have these marked down, but I have it notated. Okay. Mark 9. Come on. Mark 9 and verse 42. I just started 41. For whosoever, and that whosoever is those of Israel, shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Hamashiach. Verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Verse 42. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. Okay, again, John is referring to the little children, the little ones, okay? Those of us who are coming into the faith, uh, all right, uh, putting off the old man, becoming the new man, and so on, okay? Also, let's look at Luke. I got Luke 17. Lord willing, I could get to it. It's a lot. I typically mark these pages with a piece of paper or something, but. I was trying to rush to get out here before this rain gets back in here. Luke 17.
Yeah, Luke 17, verse, I started verse 1, point is in verse 2. Then said he unto the disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones, okay? So that's the point I wanted to hit with that. Okay, so I'll go back to where I was in verse 2 of chapter 2, which reads, And he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. Okay, which seems to be a stumbling block to all the so-called Christians out there who think that all the laws and the commandments are done away with. Yeah, they preached that to us all our lives. And many of us fail to study on our own to get to know the word on our own. And if we had done that, we would see that that's not true. Okay? So let me move on. Verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of the Most High perfect perfected whereby know we that we are in him he that saith and abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walketh brethren I write no new commandment unto you but an old commandment which had from the beginning the old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning again a new commandment I write unto you which things is true in him and in you because the darkness is past and the true light now shining. And I also have in the margin here uh, to go over to Mark 12. And read 13. Mark 12. Mark 12 through, uh, what did I say? I think I got 34. Okay, so listen to this. You know, from the epistle of John, then we jump over back to Mark and listen to what Yahweh Shai said and did. Okay, let's start at verse 13. This is uh, Mark 12, verse 13. And they said unto him, Salaki, and they, and they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words and when they will come they say unto him master We know that thou art true and carest for no man for thou regardest not the person the person of men But teaches the way of the most high and truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Shall we give or shall we not give but he knowing their hypocrisy said unto them Why tempt ye me bring me a penny that I may see it? And they brought it, and he said unto them, unto them, Whose is this image and subscription? And they say unto him, Caesar's. And Yahweh Shah answered and said unto him, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to the Most High the things that are the Most High. And they marveled at him. Then come unto him the Sudacees, which say, There is no resurrection. And they ask him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die, and leave his wife behind him and leave no children that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were seven brethren and the first took a wife and died, left no seed. And the second took her and died, neither left he any seed and the third likewise. And the seventh had her and left no seed. Last, last of all, the woman died also. In the resurrection therefore, when they all shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. And Yahweh Shah answered, said, saying unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of the Most High? For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor 
nor given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. And as touching the dead, that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses how in the bush the Most High spake unto him, saying, I am the power of Abraham, and the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob. He is not the, the, the power of the dead, but the power of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceived that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Yahweh Shai answered him, the first of all the commandments is here, O Israel. The Lord our power is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is no, there is one power and there is none other but he and to love him with all thy heart and with all thy understanding and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and to love his neighbors as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifice. And when Yahweh saw that he had answered discreetly, he said unto them, Thou art not far from the kingdom of the Most High, and no man after that durst ask him any questions. Okay, so the two, the two other commandments cover all the other commandments. Okay, people think that the commandments are done away with, but those two others that we just read cover all those other ones. If you can do those, you can do them. You can do those, the the ten. Okay, loosely, uh, you know, translated and paraphrased. You know, uh, the the understanding of that is that that's what that's about. That that's what you can do. Those two additional, if you will, are really not in this additional. They just cover the other ten, as it were. Okay. Of course, we know that there are more laws than that, and the law doesn't save you. Grace and mercy, and Yahweh Shai's was going to save us. His shed blood, but you know, uh, we still have to perform to the best of our ability in this captivity. Okay, so let me move on and get to another point. Back over to John, First John, and I'm going to start again at uh, verse nine. He that saith he is in the light and, and hateth his brother is in darkness, even until now. Okay, going back to that, that other commandment, loving thy brother, loving thy neighbor as thyself. Okay? Uh, he that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is no, none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children. Okay, so here we go again with John calling for the little children, making, making a point to bring the attention to the new ones coming back in, okay? So let's look at uh, Matthew 18, okay? Get some of these th things down here in the precepts uh, of what's being referred to. So like, I can't even remember what I had. 18, 10, 10 through 14. Okay. So let's go to Matthew 18, start at verse 10. Take, and this is Yahweh Shah speaking. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their, their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye? If a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, doeth he not leave the ninety and nine and go into the mountain and seek it that which is gone astray? And, and if so be it that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoices more over that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, 
it is not the will of your father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish so when we looking at this new testament man you know there was no new testament written at the time the apostles went out at the time that paul came into his ministry at the time that john was writing all of his letters his epistles there was no new testament their body of work what they were doing became the new testament okay it became the new testament but they went out and did the work to try to call the israelites back in try to bring them back into their heritage okay so they are fishing for the little ones okay now let me go back over to uh the epistle of john again and keep reading verse 12 and i write unto you little ones because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake i write unto you fathers because you know ye have known him that is from the beginning i write unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one i write unto you little children because ye have known the father all right and let's go over to uh verse 14 this is still chapter 2 verse 14 first epistle of john i have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning i have written unto you young men because ye are strong and the word of the most high abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and again looking up that word world at the end is cosmos okay and a, 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 a rulership a arrangement okay and the world passed in verse 17 and the world passes away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of the most high abideth forever okay so keeping keeping that in mind let's look at uh I told y'all it's going to be jumping all over the place. Um, just with verse 15, 16, and 17, love not the world, neither the things thereof, you go over to uh, James. Let's look at let's look at James 4 and 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the most high whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy to the most high okay then uh let's look at uh, luke go back to luke like i said you are you know you always go back and read the chapter on your own I'm trying to pull some of this stuff out because here in this epistle of John, man, it's, it's, it's loaded with a lot of stuff. You know, a lot of good stuff to, you know, to go back and reference, which is what he's doing. You know, he's calling back all the all the things of of the covenant. This is not that hard. I don't understand what's going on. Well, I mean, I do understand. But you know, you try to break this down to people and they, they, they're just dumbfounded. They, they can't get it. And I and, and you know, the only thing you can do is, is, is say, hey, it's, I guess it's not meant for them to get it. Because it's not really, it's not really hard. What did I say? Uh, let's go to Luke 10 and look at verse 16. Keep it with the same thing. Loving the world, the flesh of the, of, of the world, the lust of the world, being an enemy of the Lord. He that heareth you heareth me, and he that despises you despises me, and he that despises me despises him that sent me. Okay? Um, I wanted to look at... Uh, look at something else, but I, I guess I'll put it off. I don't know how much time I'm running, 25 minutes almost. Okay, we'll go on, all right? 
Verse 18, still in chapter 2 of the first epistle of John. Little children, see, directing all of this attention is to bring the little children in and give them a reference point of who we are, who you are, and what you need to come back to. He's already dressed the older man, the younger men we've overcome, we know the father, and so forth. So the younger people, I add myself in there, okay? You know, we gotta get our footing. We gotta get back to who we are naturally, okay? And, and get back into our inheritance, okay? Verse 18, little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would not doubt. They would have no doubt continued with us. But they went out, and they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he that denieth Yahweh Shai is the Hamashiach. He is an antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledged the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that ye if that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he had promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaching you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now little children abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him in his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. And I'm going to continue on down to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into chapter 3, okay? Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because I, it knew him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Now see, I had a conversation with somebody about a knucklehead, a knucklehead Christian who thinks that the sons of God were demons that fell from heaven going back to Genesis chapter 6. Okay, and those were not any damn demons that follow Satan out of heaven. You know, that's some more Christian doctrine that, you know, you jakes out there, you still eating that up. Okay, uh, that's not what that's meaning. Okay, here you see what John is saying. We are the sons of the living power. Okay, uh, but I don't want to get sidetracked with that. Verse 2. Beloved, now we know that we are the sons of the Most High, and it doeth not yet appear that we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Okay? I'm going to stop right there because we read uh, uh, verse 4. Um, no, you know what? I'll go on. Verse 4, chapter 3, verse 4, first epistle of John. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for, the, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know, know him, knoweth him. Salakia. I'll read that again. Verse 6, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Verse 7, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. 
okay? He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of the Most High was manifested, that we might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of the Most High doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of the Most High. In this, the children of the Most High are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of the Most High, neither he that loveth not his brother. So that takes you right back to Esau and Jacob, okay? Which is Amos 1 and 11, you go read that, okay? Um, and go back into Genesis and read the story of uh, Esau and Jacob, okay? Okay, but Esau hated his brother, all right? For this is, go, going on verse 11, for this is the message that ye heard from the beginning that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one and slew his brother, and wherefore slew him, because he, he because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Okay? Um, I think what I want to do is... I'm going to jump over to chapter 4. I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to jump over to ch chapter 4. It's kind of hard because I want to read the whole thing. Um, I want to keep reading on 3. I'm going to keep going on 3. Okay? Let's, let's do that. Uh, verse 14 we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren he that loveth not his brother abideth in death whosoever hath his brother is a murderer hateth his brother is a murderer and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him whereby proceed we the love of the most high because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren but whoso hath his world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up the bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of the Most High in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, the Most High is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward the Most High. And whosoever we ask, Salakia, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So you still have to perform those commandments, even if you're talking about the two additional, let's just say, uh, talked about in Matthew, and Mark, okay, the Yahweh Shai added on, okay, that's going to cover the other commandments, okay? All right, let me, let me move on. And this is the commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth this commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we knoweth that he abideth in us, but the spirit which he hath given us. Beloved, believe not every spirit, this is chapter four, but try the spirit whether ye are of the most high, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Whereby know ye the spirit of the most high. Every spirit that confesses Yahweh Shai Mashiach is come in the flesh is of the most high. And every spirit that confesses not that Yahweh Shai Mashiach is come in the flesh is not of the most high. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Wherefore ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. So we were dealing with these liars even from that time. 
and you still have them today calling our savior by a different name in this wicked ass place with all these wicked people who are ruling Esau or Edom and the Lord is going to bring destruction upon this place known as Babylon the Great America okay it's going to happen so the prophets the teachers are out here to bid you back to the marriage to tell you to come back to your heritage okay the epistles are written calling those people of, of old time 2,000 years ago to do the same thing so the people that were wicked then were ruling and the same people who were trying to get the Israelites to come back to their heritage you have the same thing 2,000 years plus right now today going on the same men the same people are out here trying to tell you to come out of the world come back to your heritage repent receive eternal life in the name of Yahweh Shai Mashiach okay and come out of the world this world is done it's finished there's nothing else in it for you come on out repent and come back to your heritage and get yourself saved okay you have to endure to the end to be saved but you got to you got to repent and come back okay so when you see the men out there don't just idly walk by because you got some caramel popcorn to get on the boardwalk or you going to the damn casino downtown to go gambling okay or you run into some mischief all right this is your time the window is closing this world is done okay it's done and i'm gonna stop right there we're going on 30 plus minutes i didn't mean this to go that long but like i said i was going to jump around to try to bring some things together remember the little ones right okay um, understand that the new testament equates to the body of work that the apostles did and was written down okay um, christians tend to think that the new testament was was going on back then like like they they were reading like i'm reading today so they tell you that you're not in the old covenant okay but the law is done away with how were the people repenting right what were they coming back to they had to be coming back to what was written because the apostles the disciples were all teaching the laws, the commandments, okay? The prophecies that were already spoken of. So, if anybody else is out there and you're tripping over this thing, man, whether you should be trying to keep up with what the Lord, what the Lord told you to do and to come back, man, you gotta, you gotta somehow, you gotta pray and get that foolishness of the Christian church out of your mind, out of your heart, man. You know come back into your your heritage okay and receive that eternal life repent okay repent okay that's gonna do it for the lesson i'm not gonna ramble on i give all praise to yahweh by shem yahweh shah by shem we call the dash peace to the hopeful elect of israel uh salutations to all the brothers the akim out there who are doing the work stay up all right the lord is gonna be with us through this thing okay the skies are darkening again i'm gonna get out of here and I'll be I'll see you on the next lesson, Lord willing, Shalom.